That's it from here. We'll uh, see you tomorrow at game time, 11.30 here at the stadium. And we'll hope everybody's still smiling tomorrow, Dan. Thanks. And I hope you put your war paint back on tomorrow, Dan. So take a look at markets. And it's going to come down to the team who wants it the most, the team that has prepared the hardest since the beginning of the season, the teams that, that want the Big Ten championship the most. I think that'll be the team that'll be most successful Saturday. Illinois is playing great defense. That's the one thing that has separated this ball club from all the others that they've had is that this one is playing great defense. And so along with their offense, it's always been capable. Um, they're, they're, they're an excellent football team. And that says it all. In Champaign, Rick Zarek, Channel 17 Sports. College football swings into the stretch drive on the NCAA today, and it's here at Illinois Memorial Stadium, dedicated 59 years ago when Red Grange galloped all over Michigan, and where the Fighting Illini and Wolverines today will all but settle the Big Ten title. The University of Florida football team is undefeated so far this year, and here in Gainesville, they love their Gators. But the cheering may soon stop. I'm Pat O'Brien, and I'll have that story. Today's game against Illinois may very well be the most important one Michigan plays all year. How did Bo Schembechler prepare his team day in and day out? I'm Eric Varsegan, and I'll have that story. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome to the NCAA Today. Once again, the coach, Eric Parsegan, Pat O'Brien, he's on hand, too, and they'll help me sort out the X's and O's here this afternoon. Now, you know, it is not likely we'll see the kind of day Red Grange had on October 18th, 1924, when he passed for a 6 TD in routing Michigan. But this is a day of big games that will go a long, long way towards settling the New Year's Day bowl picture, but none more important than this game that you'll see right here in Champaign, Illinois. The Corks have been popping all week as the Fighting Illini look for their first win ever over Bo Schembechler. You know, for the campus and the community, it's been a week-long party with the day targeted as New Year's Eve and the 4th of July all wrapped up as one. And in Champaign, fans of the Fighting Illini hope that everything is coming up roses. But a disc jockey tried somewhat to keep things in perspective in that city. Just a game. Just a simple football Just game. Just a game. Yeah, uh-huh. The fans painted the town red and themselves orange and blue, showing the school colors as they sang the local hit, Rose Bowl Bound. Well, we'll roll. You'd have to be an aging undergraduate to remember the last time the Illini went to Pasadena on New Year's Day. That was 1964, and their center was a junior named Dick Butkus. He also played a little linebacker for that team, a whole lot of linebacker, as Illinois downed Washington 17-7. Now the fans hope today will be as sweet as that yesterday. I think that this weekend is it. I've already bought a ticket to Pasadena for <laughs> Christmas break, so I'm ready. I think we're going to blow them out. <laughs> yeah. It's a wealth of riches around Chicago. The White Sox, now they can cheer for the fighting Illini down in Champaign. That's a catchy little tune, Rose Bowl Bound. I wonder if they'll be playing it next week. Wouldn't they love to be going, though? An afternoon of big games. At Champaign, of course, you're going to watch Michigan against Illinois. And then down in the southeast, where they're thinking a Sugar Bowl instead of Rose Bowl, the big one today is Florida at Auburn. In the next... In Champaign, just another big game for Bo Schembechler in Michigan. He's been there so many times in the past, but you know, what few folks realize is that man right there learned his football right at the knee of Arab Parsigan. <laughs> Brent, as you 